Let's start the show by asking you. I'm sure your phone is not too far away from where you are sitting right now. Pick it up for a second. Go into your settings and see what it says about the time that you're spending on each of these social media apps. So, you know how to do this on Android and on Apple. These settings are slightly different, but you just need to go into your settings. See how much time you're spending every single day lost in the scroll, double tapping on pictures. It gives a kind of rush to us. There's no way we can deny that. And we wanted to ask today, do you often find yourself checking for likes even before you've had your coffee in the morning, when you're sitting on the toilet, for example, when you're talking to other people on the phone, you're also checking your phone at the same time. How many times do you find yourself multitasking where one of the two things you're doing is checking social media? Today, we're, deeping, di we're diving deeper into this topic. We're going to be talking to specialists. We're also going to be talking to people from right here in our office to ask them a little bit more about their social media habits and a key question that we want you to take, to take home, which is how conscious every single day are you about how much you shape your social media usage have you used it taken a step back understood how you want to be on social media and then step back in because whether it's a stunning outfit someone that you know is wearing or it's a celebrity life that you follow moment by moment all of us are sucked into online but how much sharing is too much sharing that's obviously the big question whether you're a sharer or a lurker because that's another thing a lot of us aren't posting Posting, we just spend hours looking at reels, looking at other people's Instagrams. All of this and the drawbacks we'll be taking a deeper dive into today. First, let's start off the show with a sort of honest tell-all. So I checked my own phone as we were starting the show. Uh, my social media usage is quite high. It's about um, an hour and a half every single day on just one or two social media apps. But we also thought we have to bring in more voices here. So we have with us from right here in our newsroom because we wanted to hear from both millennials and Gen Zs. We have Shantanu Sarkar. Uh, Shantanu, you're 25 plus and we have with us over here Ayusha. Ayusha, you are 23. We wanted to get a slightly younger voice in too. Both of you are joining us. Thank you for joining us so bright and early on the show. So I just want to tell you, our audiences, both of them have also shared their social media usage with us and we'll actually be playing it out for you. We'll show you their social media usage as we talk to each of them. We'll go over to Shantanu first to ask him. Shantanu, you use Instagram for more than an hour every day. Firstly, thank you for revealing that data to us. Tell us, before we go ahead, what's your relationship with social media and have you always posted a lot? So, hi Toya and thank you for uh, having me on this show. So, my relationship with the social media especially is just like when I want to chill, I want to want to switch my chill mode on. So, mm -hmm. I switch on to my social media, I switch on to Instagram and I'm a social butterfly. I like posting lots of stories and reels. So, that is how it's the relationship between me and social media. But I have to ask, how much sharing for you is, is too much sharing? So, uh, an easy way to answer that is, would you post a picture, for example, if you've just cried, you know, off your face with tears? I, that sounds absurd, but I know a lot of people do that too. So, is that something you'd ever do? Uh, it's never too much, uh, too much of sharing for me on social media. It's just like I won't post a picture of me crying it, but mm. something related to the story which I'm going through. Mm. I'll post a reel or a story to make my followers realize that Ki, I'm going through some sad times or a bad time. Mm. So it is like that. So I keep on posting and keep my followers updated with it. So even. But I have to ask then, if you post and you don't get the kind of response you want, so say you had a horrible day, you make a post about it, and then you don't get the kind of response you want, isn't there that flip side too, that then you're feeling worse? Uh, not at all, it's not like that, it's about like how I feel posting. I am a social butterfly and keep my followers updated, how they are feeling, how am I feeling too. So it's just like if I go missing out like posting anything for two or three days, my mm. friends are like, like, where are you, are you doing fine or not? So to keep them posted, I keep myself, you know, I keep on updating my social media on okay. Instagram and Facebook. Your argument is you do it for the community, basically. I do it for myself as well. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's keep that. I want to go to Ayusha right now. Ayusha, you know, the, the stereotype is often that the younger you are, the more online you are. Uh, we often think that, you know, even when we were discussing who we should get on the show, we were thinking, oh, if we get someone who's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that age group, these are people who are online all the time and it's not just Instagram. You're 23, but you've navigated, is it fair to say, uh, a mature relationship with social media where you've decided for yourself, it seems that it's, it's not entirely for you being on there 24-7. Is that accurate as a summary? 
Oh yes, definitely. I think my relationship with social media is something very love and hate one. Um, initially, I really enjoyed updating my friends about my life mm -hmm. and everything that is going on. But over the time, I realized that this is not for me. You know, that constant stream of notifications, that red like button, that right. notification box constantly popping up would send some, you know, it, it would cause me so much, it would trigger my social anxiety, so to say. Mm -hmm. So I realized that this is not for me. And for the sake of my mental health, after a point, I decided to step back. Hmm. Can I ask you, because you said it triggered your social anxiety, and I actually want to take this question to both of you. Uh, did it trigger other things? And I ask you that because I know that when I use social media, and especially when I use it for too long, I find myself comparing myself to mm. who I'm seeing online. And it doesn't, I don't just mean in the career perspective, most often, in fact, for the women around me, it's in the physical perspective. Uh, I, see, I see even my mother, I see my grandmother, everyone who's using social media, your mind starts making comparisons. So did you see that happening? And how did you rework your relationship then? Oh yes, absolutely. I think consuming too much of social media sets this, you know, this urge in you to meet certain Eurocentric beauty standards, which might be very unrealistic. Mm. But you start pondering over it too much, and again, it it starts taking a toll on your mental health. Mm. So that is also something I decided, or rather, I thought I should come up with another alternative to mm. cope up with it, because at the same time. I feel like social media is very important because you have to document certain things, say for example some milestones, some achievements. Mm. So social media that, that way becomes really um, important. Shantanu, have you seen a downside of any kind in, in using social media all the time? Or for you is it because you, you sounded so positive and it is so lovely to see such positivity. Has it been an entirely positive relationship for you? Have there been downsides? Tell us. So it's like uh, sometimes like you feel uh, sad sometimes you just see this, he's guys, this guy is having this kind of life or this woman is having this kind of life. But we all know that we all have a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. So like we have to, you know, check it like it's fine. Like it's, it's completely all right for me. It's never a comparison because we know that we have a different lifestyle. That's it. Okay, but you're telling me that. Are you able to tell yourself that when you need to at the right times? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, make, I keep myself, you know, explaining the thing. You know, this, everyone has a different life and different path. So this is not the way that... Okay, I, I, I want to ask you one last question. And this is again to both of you. Have you both taken prolonged breaks from Instagram or from social media in general ever? Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, you I, have? I okay. have been on a four-year hiatus now. Oh, wow. I think this is hmm. my fifth year going on. Hmm. I haven't posted even a single picture. Wow. Because of the same, you know, the anxiety thing that I told, hmm. uh, earlier talked about. Hmm. But you were saying that you also think it's important sometimes to post for milestones, etc. So then how do you balance that? Do, because there are a few social media platforms. In fact, these days people even use LinkedIn uh. sometimes as a social media platform to do exactly what you're talking about. So do you not post on any social media platform? How have you, how have you moderated that? And then how do you keep people up to date with your life? Something as simple as that. Right. So there's this Another Gen Z thing, uh, mm. which I'm very grateful for, it's called Finsta. Ah, yes. So, uh, what I've done is I've not really... Let me just tell our audiences before we go on. Yes. Finsta, when you have an account that doesn't have your name on it, some of us have multiple accounts without our names on them, so you sing. Yeah. So, um, for me, I have hidden my uh, real profile picture and even the username is very creative or absurd, mm. so to mm. say. Mm. So, and uh, the... People who follow me are people who I interact with on a daily basis. Mm. So it makes me very comfortable to share something with people who yeah. I know. Hmm. So that's an interesting way to go around it because you're still using the platform, yeah. but you're not, your privacy, for example, is entirely intact, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, Ayusha, Shantanu, thank you for giving us that insight into both of your lives. It takes a lot to come out here and just talk about the way that you've shaped your perspective on this entire, entire issue. All right, we wanted to bring you this right in the beginning to start the show with because we wanted to give you two different perspectives on how younger people in particular are navigating their usage of social media. Let's go to a slightly more challenging example now. We have joining us live on the show this morning, Paris Thomar. He has 650,000 followers. He is an... Paris, let me just tell our audiences before we come over to you. Uh, you're an actor, but you post constantly and your posts are so engaging. Your posts, your stories too. And I'm just telling our audiences that as we come to you, because you're as we speak in Korea, and over the last few days too, Korea has not meant 
that you're taking a break from Instagram at all. You're posting posts about, you know, when you go shopping, for example, the kind of clothing hauls you've made. You're posting posts about every aspect. So first question for you is, how do you navigate the big question, Paras, of what is oversharing, what is not oversharing? Is there a boundary that you've sorted out in your own head? Let me see. All right. So I was talking, one of my big videos I put up the other day was about the fact that, oh, look at how many hickeys I have. Now, okay. I don't know if you would talk about that as oversharing because as an LGBT activist, I was talking about the fact that you have these areas where LGBT people can find where they have to go. Hmm. Hmm. It's not really oversharing because I think the one thing I have done for myself always is to contextualize my oversharing with some information. Hmm. So a lot of the people who follow me eventually, while I might be doing the masti, I'm partying, I'm talking about my new girlfriends and boyfriends, that could be considered oversharing. But there's always an undertone or an under layer of something you will find as information. Hmm. Because I'm known mostly for Paras Kinuski, which is skincare, a lot of the stuff I'm normally doing is teaching you something. So oversharing for me has not really been a problem. Also, I genuinely, you know, I always say I'm a bit of a narcissist and I'm a documentary filmmaker. It's just that the only thing I'm documenting is my own life. So I'm perpetually talking about what I am doing, where I am, what, what is up. And it's always fun. Like, for example, now that we're on this broadcast, a whole bunch of people who are following me will say, oh, I'm the that you had bought this, you had know the price of what I have bought. They will know exactly where I bought it from. So I think the good part about this, and I have to say this is for a lot of people, you know, and I hear some people talk about social anxiety and I, I think, and I see this, I'm 40, I'm a CEO and a founder. In fact, I'm no more no an actor. I run a business which did 300 crores last year. But to also understand all those milestones also make you feel like you really arrived and like you feel successful. I'm no longer looking for validation. When I was mm. 18, I was a journalist with your channel. Mm. You know, so I started my journey like that, but I was always very sure of what I was doing. So I think social media for me actually has been a very different tool. I don't have a mum, I don't have a dad, I'm actually all alone. Uh, I went to a gay sauna about three days ago, I was in an alley. I'm not even joking, I felt so scared because I was like, hey listen, what if I'm going to be in trouble? Putting up a small story, they're saying, guys, I don't know where I am. I actually felt a lot better. People knew where I was, I tagged the place, you can actually use it as a safety tool. You know, mm. a lot of people who say well, about social anxiety, when people say stuff like, I'm feeling jealous when I see other people's lives. I also think this is also currently a Gen Z problem versus a millennial problem. When I see someone who's great, I don't want to feel jealous. It's like, great, this is awesome, I want it, let me work hard towards it. Mm. So I think very often it's about the narrative that you create and as an entrepreneur for me, when I see something which is amazing, which I think Insta is great for, you can like either see it in a way saying, oh my God, look at how much the other person has. Or say, hey, listen, I really like this life. Let me watch this story and say, okay, this is where he went. This is what he did. If it cost him, say, 35 lakhs to do this trip, let me earn the 35 lakhs because he's also giving me videos about how to run a business. Hmm. So I think oversharing for me has not really been a problem because also, let's be real, I am open. I've been open about my life, my sexuality, my business, my numbers. And when you are that open, you don't really have much to hide. So in my case, the reason I'm not, I don't call it oversharing is because everything in my life is transparent. And because it is all transparent, there is nothing to hide. I'm not simply sharing the good moments. I'm not simply sharing the bad moments. I'm sharing all the moments. We were coming to uh, the country. Uh, we got stopped by customs for 45 minutes. They looked at my beautiful face. They're like, you're too good looking for this country. What's going on? Of course, we were documenting it. So now I'm going to go and tell people, saying, guys, if you're coming to, we've come here without a South Korean visa, by the way, with one Joel. Huh. You know, where you can, if you're going to Australia, you can transit for 30 days. So the thing for me is oversharing is great because in my case, it's always layered with multiple amounts of information. And I think that is why people watch this stuff and they're like, hey, can say, was that a guy? Was that a girl? People are interested. Hmm. You're breaking the LGBT barrier. You're bearing the, breaking the party barrier. You're normalizing so much stuff by talking about it. So you're almost saying that there's uh, there's an undertone to every single thing you're doing. There's a message you're trying to sp spread. I just want to ask you though very quickly, we heard right before we came over to you, we heard uh, someone talking about their social anxiety and they were talking a little bit about how they've taken a hiatus altogether and how that's made them feel. I just want to ask you then, any advice you'd have to give to people as they're navigating social media, especially, you know, if they haven't reached the confidence levels that you're at right now? You're saying it's been a journey that's gotten you here. What would your advice be? Would it just be to post through any anxiety? You know, I, the one thing I honestly don't do is I never look at comments. You will really, my mm. team for business will look at comments. And that has been, you actually, anyone who's around me will see, Paris is never on his phone. I could be making a story, I could be shooting. I am, ne I am never scrolling social media. I have zero interest. For the simple reason that I have so much happening in my life already. If I'm looking ah. for information, I might look for it. The one thing I never do is, if you can stay away from comments, that will keep your life so easy. I'll tell you why. 
great comments that make you feel wonderful. They make you feel like, oh my God, I'm the most important person on the planet. I am so incredibly good looking. I'm so successful. All the comments that make you feel good, that you're going to get so heightened. It's like an insulin spike, right? Like with sugar. Hmm. You're going to feel so happy about all the good things people are saying to you. When somebody says, listen, I don't like what you're wearing, that one comment is going to bother you. So as a rule for me, what? and if you go to my social media, I don't engage with comments. I just don't. It's kept me so simple. The second thing I will tell you is the current trend which is happening where a lot of people will start saying, I'm unfollowing you. I'm unfollowing you. Say, this happens to me very often. I will mm. put up uh, content about Ayurveda. I will put up content about spirituality. I'll put up content about sexuality. Like with somebody who's following me for Ayurveda, who's not following me for the LGBT content, then they'll say stuff like, I'm unfollowing you. You know, when people say, log, char, log, kya kahenge, they don't realize they are the four people. And I've always been very clear about the fact that the day I start letting people following me or unfollowing me dictate my life, I'm in trouble. I'm very happy about people's generosity about following my life. At the same time, you have to be clear. I always say this even to my followers. I'm happy you follow me, but I don't live my life for your follow. And I think, like you're saying, that also comes with age, that comes with success, that comes with experience. If you can enjoy it without having to think that my entire life tomorrow is based on how many followers I have, you'll be fine. And I think Gen Z in that sense has a better handle because they have realized this is social currency is eventually called Momaya. Today, people love you. Tomorrow they will troll you. So you have to be very well balanced. The people who really are in your life are the people who love you no matter what. And I think when you understand that, it's nice to feel loved, it's nice to feel wanted, but you have to understand that validation is going to come from strangers. The brick paths will also come from strangers. Hmm. So eventually, if you don't read your comments, which is the one thing I do, you'll be fine. It just makes your life so much easier. And the other thing is that anyone says, hey, I'm unfollowing you because you put up these stories. I'm like, it's all right, fine. I'm very happy to have maybe 10 people who are following me. But there are people who really like me for what I really do. And even that's fine because I document it for myself. You know, the one other advice I give a lot of um, people who are now, also for us, it's business. I built a 2,500 crore worth crore company on social media. So I have a lot of regard for social media. My entire mm. business today runs because of Instagram and Facebook. For us, it's commerce. I hire 600 people and their livelihoods are based on what Paris is doing, right? So for us, it's commerce. It's slightly different. But at the same time, my social media versus my brand social media, even though it's both Paris, is very different. My brand social media is very sanskari. There I'm maybe not showing as much chest hair and chest. But on my own Instagram, I'm like, hey guys, listen, this is where I am. The only thing I've done is my language is clean. And that comes from broadcast. I can say anything, but I will not abuse. My language will be clean. And that's the beauty of social media. You can say everything you want without feeling like you have to go through censorship. right? And that's mm. what broadcast taught me. When I was at uh, CNN News 18, you should be able to say whatever you want. Your language should not be abusive. And then, and that's fine. And I think credibility comes from that a lot. Paras, thank you. You've, it's, it's so funny because we had so many questions for you and you've addressed all of them in just these two answers. Thank you for taking out the time, but also more importantly, thank you for telling us how we can navigate because you've got a very, very positive, it feels, a lot of respect also for what social media can help you do. So thank you for taking out the time. We know you're joining us right now from Korea as we speak. Let's go over very quickly right now to our third and our last guest. So we've all heard about how social media can affect affect you psychologically. Let's speak right now to someone who's going to give us all of the guidance when it comes to navigating this entire question. Let's go over to Arjuna Singhal just to understand a little bit more. She is two things. She's a family therapist. She's also a counsellor. I just want to go over to him to ask her. Arjuna, just tell us, um, we've heard right now from a vast variety of reactions. We've got uh, two kids right here in the studio mm -hmm. who navigated one, a very positive relationship, one, a slightly more complex relationship with social media. And we also just had Paras, who was a big, big advocate for using social media positively. His point being that there is a way to use it for good. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, there's been so much that's been written about the dopamine hit that you get. Yes. When you post something online, what is your thought Mm -hmm. Arjuna, do you see it as negative, as positive? Let's just get that out of the way first, then we'll take further questions to you. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just start with this dopamine thing that you just asked. Uh, dopamine is a neurochemical that gets, you know, uh, generated in our mind when something pleasurable happens or we do something that gives us pleasure. For example, we are eating our favorite food or maybe we are talking to our favorite person. Hmm. So we get this high, you know, reward and hmm. pleasure thing in our head hmm. and hmm. that gives us a you know that sense of fulfillment hmm. so now this 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 whole psychology thing this dopamine thing has been brilliantly brilliantly exploited by social media platforms i would say 
उनका एक लाइक द काइंड ऑफ लाइक यू गेट ऑन द कंटेंट यू पोस्ट द कॉमेंट्स यू गेट द शेयर्स यू गेट दैट गिव्स यू सेंस ऑफ प्लेजर अकम्पलिशमेंट सोशल वैलिडेशन एंड दैट एक्चुअली स्टार्ट्स जनरेटिंग दैट डोप मीन इन योर ब्रेन एंड यू कैन दिस यू नो हाई ऑल टाइम हाई इट्स लाइक अ ड्रग ओके सो इट माइट बी नेगेटिव इट माइट बी पॉजिटिव येट आई वुड से देर इज अ there is a way to take it like paras said that uh, he has he has he has been able to uh, manage everything in moderation but not not everybody can do that hmm. teenagers today have started uh, connecting or uh, you know uh, these likes with their self worth hmm. the problem rises there when you connect the number of likes the number of followers the number of shares that you get with the your self worth the problem rises there So I want to ask you my fear with such conversations is often are we underestimating younger kids so is it possible for example and this is something we're seeing right now where you're seeing and I see this all around me where in every field you have 21 and 22 year olds examples of 21 and 22 year olds who are doing really really well in the field they're very very confident they're posting their entire journey on social media so is it possible maybe and i'm just asking that there are kids who've grown up with social media and it's actually making them really confident are do examples like that exist also yes it makes them confident but then it makes them makes them fearful too at times mm. they just connect their self worth with what kind of attention they are getting on social media and that's where it hits them hard hmm. once they don't get that kind of attention they start feeling worthless that fear of fomo they want to share everything that is happening without realizing that it could be a safety concern for them sometime so these are the things they need to be address you know they need to address or they need to be educated hmm. especially with the adults they are living with or maybe with the friends they are interacting with let me ask you uh, how what does cultivating a healthy self worth and it's so funny because we're talking about younger kids but this is a question as relevant if you're you know 16 20 40 what does cultivating a healthy self worth free from external validation look like or is that unrealistic see human wi- brain is wired to uh, you know look for validation all the time as childhood as early as childhood we have seen we look for approval from adults from our parents from peers from teachers so ye validation ki jo feeling hoti hai na hmm. that actually is manipulated by social media platforms wahan social media platforms pe is tarike ki algorithm develop ki jati hai jahan aap uh, jo content ko most likely like karenge ya uh, connect karenge ya comment karenge wo aapke social media feed pe sabse pehle aa jata hai Haan, this is the kind of algorithm that they have developed the the social media apps are designed such that they will exploit this very uh, human nature of uh, seeking validation and social uh, connection so uh, i'm sorry i missed the self worth then what is it yes like? the self worth hmm. part the self worth part you need to educate yourself that your self worth is not dependent on others hmm. it's something that you're born with hmm. you have to work on it every day hmm what does it actually look like hmm. Hmm. self worth hmm. actually looks hmm. like hmm. being confident in your own skin hmm. not looking for approval from others hmm. be confident about what you're doing for example if i am educating masses on my page i know what content i am posting it doesn't matter the number of likes i get the number of comments i get are you actually able to when i just want to tell our audiences ajna you have a very active social media page yes, where you're always talking about this issue So tell us are you able to actually enforce what we're talking about in your own head where you don't look at the engagement or is it that you look at the engagement but you don't take self worth from it I hmm. look at engagement of course as a I'm not a social media in- influencer I, I'm a digital creator right so I look at the engagement it matters of course but not to the extent of my self worth hmm. my self worth is very separate from the kind of engagement I get on my social media platform hmm. and honestly as instagram gets really exhausting that's the only social media platform on on which i'm most active hmm. so Because before before we let comes. you go I, i do want to ask you walk us through the process tell us what you're telling yourself so what do i mean if you see a post and you see your brain suddenly making comparisons whether it's from someone else in your field hmm. uh, whether it's another lady whatever it is what do you see your brain telling yourself and what do you step in there and say instead I have a lot of uh, similar accounts that I follow. Hmm. They pay, po- uh, post brilliant account. So I take the uh, similar accounts as mine as uh, you know as inspiration 
rather mm. than comparison mm. so there is uh, there are, the comparison thing is another different kind of a topic i would say it's downward it's upward it can be corrosive it can be motivating hmm. so it's the way you see it hmm. i see it as motivating i do compare but not to the extent that uh, if i'm not doing if i'm not getting that much of the engagement if not i'm not getting that much of the likes then my uh, my work is worthless i don't hmm. see it that way hmm. i'm doing my job as per the best of my capacity that's the belief i nurture and believe hmm hmm Can I just ask one last question to you? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot in terms of studies that show that something like sports is excellent for us to get people to do because it cultivates a healthy sense of self-worth and competition. Mm -hmm. What are other things that our audience can do stepping away from social media to do that? They need to uh, be very strong-willed about using things, using social media in moderation, hmm. nurturing hobbies. uh engaging in uh, some passionate outdoor activities hmm. nurturing your uh, recreational things these these are the things they need to focus on hmm hmm your point is if you're doing each of these things and maintaining for yourself that there's a world outside social media you yeah, won't get sucked in you have a strong will towards disciplining your life okay you need to set a uh, time aside for everything hmm see i tell my clients all the time that there are there is a one whole full glass of water for you that you can drink in the whole day so you take four or five more glasses and distribute the amount of water you can have at regular intervals so mm -hmm. how would you do that mm -hmm. that those separate glasses will be the amount that that will be the activity you are ready to use that water into mm -hmm. so if you will be pouring more water in one glass only that is the social ah. media activity that means whole of your energy is diverted there hmm. so the best way would be to distribute one glass of water in separate glasses so that you can use it wisely for the whole day and maybe put very little in that social very media very little glass. in i wouldn't say little that depends if your business is dependent hmm. on social media you might have to use a little bit more of the water in that glass yet you need to be very clear about using your time wisely that those are beautiful words thank you so much archana for laying it down for our audiences okay We hope that you've gotten some guidance today in this broad discussion that we've had.